Hi, everybody, and thanks for tuning in with my chat with the amazing JP. I wanted to get him on to talk about play-based training. So, JP, thank you for lending us your time today and talking through this amazing area. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. There, and There's no telling what might happen along the way as well, also because I'm speaking with you. Oh, I'm not sure whether I should take that as a compliment. It is an absolute <laughs> pleasure to chat. <laughs> I'm not sure it is a compliment or not. I, I, I think it probably is. Oh, brilliant. We'll, well, we'll decide at the end, or rather the people listening will decide at the end. Amazing, amazing. So play-based training. Talk to me. Why? Why do we need to do it? Why? Oh, yeah, I know. I, it's um, it's a funny thing because I, I almost feel like everyone kind of likes the idea of it, but... um. But the idea of then, well, sorry, the actuality, the practical, you know, application of it isn't done so much. I think there's there's an innately human thing about play and we're unusual amongst mammals, amongst the animal kingdom in general, that we can play our whole lives because we have some basic kind of things established um, along the way, food, clothing and shelter, to, to name a few. So, but, but the thing that kind of really drives me is that we age and then somehow play is for kids and we can then relate to all the reasons why kids should play and how great it is for them to learn and develop and you know all the different social elements to it the psychological elements to it and then the you know the practical elements of you know holding things in certain ways and working things out working out you know relationships within play-based activity and and then we forget that there's a whole heap of benefits that they're getting that also we still need and and it can still supply and then when you like me and you go well I really enjoy playing physical play is is good fun physical play amongst adults is great and I you know as a PT I did it for you know a good decade or so and that was the reason that people kept coming back because they innately or intuitively felt the goodness of it all. And then, of course, I started researching it. And it's like, oh, right. So exercise does all of these amazing things and then play does all those amazing things. Oh, and these other things on top. So then it then it's like, oh, so it's not just, just a thing that you do as a little warm-up thing just to get people in the mood. It's actually... So for play, um, it's not that it's actually something that we can look at as a serious option for greater results and then have fun doing better results. And I'm like, I, I think I've just talked myself into a no brainer there. Like, do you know what I mean? That, that was that was a thing, you know, so I think because he's innately human. And then when you look at it, the benefits are beyond the benefits of stuff that maybe we learn and all agree fits under the bracket of exercise. Got it. Got it. And it's really interesting hearing you say about the things that we need and that we can get from play. Um, and what I used to find when I used to do play-based training in sessions with adults, once you gave them permission to do it, they mm -hmm. went for it you know oh. and they loved it so it's it's about um sort of inviting people and and once they're in it I think that they just find their flow in it don't they and I know we're going to dig into into many of the benefits as we go with these questions so question one You've recorded a play-based training course for us, haven't you? <laughs> Thank you very much. I have. I mean, I feel like we're on a chat show now because the only time people turn up on the chat shows is if they're trying to plug something. But we're talking generally about play. I just happen to have done a course on it. And and again, because I'm so driven to do it, because I believe in it so passionately as as the answer to so many things, kind of not, not just from an exercise point of view, but actually just in the world in general. Uh, so yeah, that my, my thinking behind that is that we as a profession 
are probably the only profession that can easily put in this necessary activity for adults. It's very mm. difficult to get any other way. Now, I, there's a reason that sport is so popular, right? Because sport and play, oh, by the way, have you noticed that we play sport? We don't work sport. You know, it's we play music. We don't work music, right? Mm. There's there's this different there's this different thing. And as soon as play becomes your job, you're probably doing a sport, aren't you? Like, oh, it's, it's my job to do that. So as soon as your sport becomes so serious that you forgot why you took it up it's no longer play and so so you lose lose a certain element when that happens right where where was my thread going so back to so the reason that i created a course was because as a profession we've got a bit serious um and i think it's because we want to be taken seriously and in order to be taken seriously then we have got those two things confused. We have to be serious to be taken seriously. Well, no, I take Ricky Gervais very seriously as a comedian. Mm-hmm. But, it, what, but what he delivers isn't, right? So he's in a serious profession. He's seriously good at his job. But all the benefits of him, as a, as in my opinion, as a high-quality comedian, it may not be that of, of someone else, uh, they're all delivered. At, at such a, a an amazing high level so we are allowed to appear not serious and be doing the most seriously professional job possible and and what i wanted to do was give a reassurance to our profession i.e a qualification to go do you know what there's a whole heap of really good stuff when it comes to play-based, you know, exercise activity, it's the, it's grounded. You can ground it in science, and you can say, go out there with confidence and say, Do you know what? Not only am I doing a really cool thing, and it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like hard. It looks unplanned, but actually, I'm ticking all of these boxes, and I now know that I'm ticking all these boxes because I understand all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes when it comes to a human being. So we're connecting with everyone at a human being level. We're ticking a whole heap of boxes that some things don't do the gamut of, do the full list of. And you can go away and say, be with with confidence, say, I know why I'm doing it, why I'm doing it like this with this particular type of client. And I know the benefits that it is therefore delivering as a result of that. That's the, there isn't a course out there that can give you that. So it was just like, okay, then we could do it in four or five hours. Like let's, let's do that. And not only do that, but let's give you 50 examples to use straight off and how you might use them with what population. For me, if we're going to get more people using it, they have to feel comfortable using it. And that's for me, the way that a lot of us do that we need it's almost like we need the rubber stamp so, of saying this is okay to do you know this is okay in our profession to do like and and i think that there was a classic what was it perry nicholson quote i think I, I i tend to bring up every now and again and he he said something like there is no correlation between you being serious and being good at but what you do that speaks to me something like that so yeah we are in other words we are allowed to have Mm -hmm. fun we're allowed to smile and we're allowed to laugh but still be very very good at what we're doing in my opinion with what some of the stuff i put in the play like play personality and understanding your client better so you can actually tailor play to your clients that actually makes us more highly professional absolutely in operating something that's that can be so nuanced you can mess it up you know what i mean it's like giving the wrong exercise you can mess it up too yeah absolutely and you you pointed out that there's like 50 examples because i think Hmm. you know you don't just dig into the scientific background and and what the benefits are you give some really tangible and examples which are also very fun to watch but you explain the whole like you say the whole uh gamut of it and stuff so 
I wanted to, you know, from what you've said already, it sounds that this is based in science. So I mm. wanted to, you know, it, and a lot of research, and it's not just play for play's sake, although I think as adults, play for just play's sake is is great. But you're actually saying that there's some scientific, you know, background here. So can you dig into that for us a little bit? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's it's a four and a half, five hour course. So I won't do that amount of stuff. But what I can say is this we can we can kind of pinpoint some stuff. There's obvious physical benefits because we're being active and we're using our whole body. So from a kind of a tissue perspective, all the tissues of our body are involved in that. And and they're involved in lots of different ways. When you move with play, there's power, there's agility, there's three-dimensional, there's multi-directional forces, like I, you know, what they would call vector variation of force in, into the system. Um, there's the, all the hand-eye coordination. The way that you move your body in play is also very human and natural. Yes. So for me, I, I can even use it as a an appraisal tool to look at how people move and go, oh, see how when they go, you know, reach downwards, how their back curves, for example. I was watching someone just the other day actually do this. It's like, oh, all right. So she gets all her range from collapsing through the front, whereas someone else gets their range from bending more at the knees. And so you can you can get an idea of that. But the thing is, it's difficult not to be successful as well. So people who are playing, their bodies will do it the way their bodies can do it. You can, by all means, work on all the things in, in either other sessions or in, in a different part of the session to help them so that then maybe their movement is more effective and efficient. But the beautiful thing about it is you're not, it's not a barrier. Whereas a lot of the time we say, oh, we, you can't do that exercise until I'm comfortable that you can do this. You know, we're, we're a little bit snooty about it, if anything, because we want them to be safe. Okay, so, all right, yeah, I'd love to do the exercise with you, but we can't because at the moment you have these limitations and we need to work on these limitations before you can do this exercise. Whereas, okay, we're playing a game. You know, it's like, it's like banning someone from chess or something, isn't it? It's, you know, you everyone can play and everyone will play to their level of, of ability. Um, and during that, there's something that happens. I call it relaxed intensity. There's something that happens, which is, they are so focused in the present moment that their body is in a in a state of of activated relaxation. <laughs> so if you had the seesaw of the of the autonomic nervous system, mm -hmm. it's not all in parasympathetic and it's not all in sympathetic. It's it's at that pivot point, that balance point. I call that balance point, by the way, because I'm a romantic. I call it it's where life happens in that yeah. balance point. You know what I mean? It's like there are so many things that happen when we are balanced between those two things. We're a little bit obsessed with driving people into parasympathetic because, because there's, it's such a sympathetic dominant society. But what we actually need is, is for them to feel life, the vibrancy of life without the stress and the strain. And play is doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm already on way, way too many tangents at this point. So let's, so I'm, I'm talking about physical, but now I'm getting into this kind of nervous system benefit. So when you talk about nervous system sensitivity, for example, a lot of us will lose that over time. It's very difficult to develop when you're doing linear movements with gym equipment. So if you want to have nervous system sensitivity, in other words, have your body know how it communicates with itself and the environment outside, play is going to do that. Sport will do it too. Play. We'll do it in a in a different atmosphere, though. So when you look at, I've got a, a section for elite athletes, for example, play for a, for a, for high performance, and and the thing that play brings is their ability to test all of their skills and abilities, but but with none of the pressure of training or gameplay, right? It's it's some so, so you could actually training sessions don't even need to be training sessions. They could actually be play sessions. Let's play all these games. We tick all these boxes as to what we 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 want you to be good at, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then we do that with a higher performing uh, from a higher performing place because we're at the pivot point of the autonomic nervous system, not sympathetic dominant, feeling the pressure and the strain of all of that. Mm -hmm. 
then if you look at play as a from a neurotransmitter or hormone perspective, you'll get all the good ones hit: serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, um, and endorphin. You might even, if you go into flow state, which flow and play are almost the same. If you become conscious of playing the game, you're not in flow. But if you're in the game, you are also in flow state. And flow state will bring anandamide as well. Anandamide is a creative thinking, lateral thinking type neurotransmitter. And then you've got endorphin is, is all about variety and novelty. It's not just high intensity when it gets released, which is a pain masker, just as a, it's, it's a two-edged sword. We could talk separately about endorphin completely, but, but it can be a two-edged sword that, that endorphin thing because it masks pain so some people go for the high of endorphin in order to mask their pain sure. rather than so it's how they deal with life i'm talking about endorphin from the unpredictability of play so you get novelty and that also stimulates creativity in the brain as well so we you know we it boosts memory you know there's 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 so much good stuff. Oxytocin because of, of the interaction between other people. Serotonin is interesting because, you know, 90% made in the, in the gut, the digestive tract. We want it to come up to the brain. Diet is, you know, nutrition is really, really important uh, as part of that in order to be healthy in that kind of region so that we can draw on our serotonin. But what that links me then into is this whole thing of organs. Now, there's a lot of exercises in the gym that don't involve whole body movement that literally jiggle things about a bit, right? Now, the jiggling of the organs around, vagus nerve loves that because the vagus nerve is, is plugged into all of that. So you get all this kind of organ jigglage, right? It's all it's all technical terms, and, yes. and, I, and I'll happily explain them at a later date should people require them. Then they're getting a... They're getting a basically a parasympathetic signal. This is good. You know, like they they like that. It's not it's not like you're on an airplane. It's actually really natural for that. So you're getting that too. This is why laughter is so great. That laughter and bringing that the diaphragm, which by the way also happens during most you know active play as well. So we've got laughter. Laughter is a, is like a serum for. It's like an anti depression, anti anxiety drug. Like it, it literally can reverse the effects of depression and anxiety. So there's a few. I haven't even talked really much about other brain benefits, for example. But, you know, there's physical, mental and emotional things. And if you want to be more socially connected, oxytocin. Absolutely. There it is. You know, there it is. So, um, yeah. And serotonin, the other thing about serotonin that I'm kind of keen on is this whole significance thing so serotonin is a is that kind of general feeling of well-being type type hormone right so we can get that from significance and that and that doesn't mean hey you know i'm out in front of a thousand people and i'm significant kind of thing we get that from being significant in an organization or in a team in other words it can be a flat hierarchy you can be an important cog in a machine, but without you, the machine can't function. That makes you significant, right? So there's that significant. Now, in a game, you lift yourself out of the game. Well, then, hang on, that the game's not the same without you in it. Like, it can't be perpetuated without you in it. So, again, there's this, there's this feeling of sort of, yes, social connection, but there's also a feeling of significance. You are part of this thing that doesn't work without you being a, doing playing your role, as it were. Mm. We play a role, don't we? Absolutely. We don't work a role. So there's, you know, there's, is, is that, should I shut up? Because I've no. been banging. <laughs> what I, what yeah. I'm hearing is right at the beginning when you were saying about it is kind of, uh, for me, in summary, is like this freedom right and then also freedom and play and uh all the benefits and stuff and that last bit is about meaning you know having meaning in life and in, in the in your place and you're right in play you you're an integral part of making that experience happen um i think what you've basically proven there is that you know your stuff jp but i knew that anyway <laughs> so that's you know what i was listening to a thing from dr joe dispenza literally just a couple of days ago 
and they and they were talking about um it was a Yale study, like 20, 30 years back. And they got actors um to exercise for one set of actors. They used actors because they could really get into the emotions. So it was about emotional state and then res physical response as a result, a result of exercise. Everyone knew exercise was good for you. So they put some in in stressed, depressed, angry, frustrated kind of mm -hmm. moves. And they said, we want you to literally act that, hold that with you and do the same workout that these guys are going to do in joy. And they found that that stressed, angry, frustrated group, all the benefits of exercise were severely curtailed as a result of the emotional state that they were in. But all the benefits that we know mm -hmm. are that you can get from exercise came from the joy group. So they had it in spades, fully, you know, a, a full kind of demonstration of the power of exercise on us as, as, as physical beings. And I, and it was like, okay, another tick for play there. Thank you very much. Absolutely. But do you think, JP, because I'm natural, you know me well, and you know that I'm just a naturally playful person, right? Yeah. Um, so for me, play is easy to, you know, create. Um, I did a lot of work with kids. I'm still very playful, but I, but as I, you know, and it's so lovely to hear at the beginning, you sort of saying that you can still be really serious and do a professional, brilliant job, but still be playful. Would you say that you came from the playful place? Or I know now with your four kids, it's obviously something that you're surrounded by, but, you know, has play been part of you for a long time or was it the science that drove you to it? I remember you read a book that was very significant to you on play. I seem to remember you saying, and I'm kind of, the reason I'm asking you this is for me, play makes sense. I'm playful. Um, I think for other people, they've lost that that sort of connection to play. And I love to hear about the science and stuff like that so that people perhaps who've lost that, I don't know, connection to play, they they will get the permission to do it and stuff. But do you, do you mm. think that some people find this easier than others? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? I'd say yes. I mean, for me, mm. it was humour that brought me to play. It was like, you know, I've I've loved humor my whole life, comedy my whole life. And um I've loved to be jokey all the well, as you know, because you probably you probably receive about 10 jokes a week from me. Um <laughs> what's that? But so I'm I'm into just you know laughter and a frivolity and just let's just feel good and laugh in life. You know, I want and and so when it when it came to exercise it got a bit serious for a bit there. And I'm like, why, how can we not have fun in the gym? Like, what's, what's that about? We're doing all this good stuff for ourselves, but it just wasn't, wasn't fun. And then, and then it was, okay. So I think it, for me, it was Ian O'Dwyer that he did this session at a conference. I think it was the Fit Pro conference back in the day, but basically what, 2008, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then he and he he took and it was like games trainers play or something, yes. and he said, "How come, how come we can't do this with adults?" And I couldn't think of a good answer for that. I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me either. And that's that's set me off on that path, right? So that was my that was my permission, right? right. He gave me permission. So I then, you know, wanted to give that to as many people as possible. So I came from that playful place. But some people do not, as you say. However, that's all in the. I talk about play profile in in the course, right? So I like I, I've got a whole heap of questions that you like, you can ask people to determine a kind of what I call a play personality um, from the way they like to move and the equipment that I like to use into things that they remember from their childhood and stuff like that. So you can actually create a play personality if you really want to get into it. Now, those people that you talk about who maybe aren't like us, aren't naturally playful, aren't naturally about being funny, um, their playfulness is in competition and in language. So, and so I don't mean using different words, different, you know, special words. I'm talking about what we can do is with the playful group, we can go, hey, we're going to play this game now and it involves you. You've got to get that from there to there. And then pick that up and go back that way, right? What we say with the 
the you know maybe the less kind of overtly playful people is you go we're going to do a drill yes and it's, it's a shuttle drill and you need so it's the same thing right you're using your game but you're just describing it differently and then you're going to go and what we want to do is we want to do this in the fastest time possible or as many of those as possible or as big a lift as possible whatever it might be we're going to adapt the way we describe things because actually everyone's playful in different ways and it's just a matter of tapping that and that and that's why asking them questions about yes. you know what what they what they truly enjoy or don't enjoy and things like that is really important so you can get get a handle on because otherwise you honestly you get some of those people that we think maybe are a bit serious but they they're not it's just that we have to approach play differently yes. you could come out with a clown's nose on and a balloon going, hey, let's all exercise. And they and they'll run in the opposite direction because they're like, yes. absolutely no way, not into it, not my thing. Right. Yes. But we could do the we could do a very similar thing with a ball and a and a set of specific mm -hmm. guidelines within which to do this. And then they might say at the end, well that well that was fun. They might say it with a straight face. <laughs> but <they'll, laughs> they will that was fun. So it's actually not the play isn't for everyone. It's actually the, the way we deliver play, which again is up down to our professionalism and our understanding of this genre. Um, we can deliver it to almost everyone, right? And there's, I mean, there's a section in the course on chair-based, people who are chair-based, for example, right? It should, it should be available to all. Like I'm an equal opportunities player. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about that play profiling sequence um mm. can you get into that a little bit because you sort of hinted at that um within the course mm. so we needed what for me we need to know about people is um one of the things we need to know is okay then what what are they like when they exercise in this in the start so that that stuff has been done well pta global when they existed would have done what did they call it mode style movement style so what we want to do is, is kind of go, hey, when you when you're exercising, do you like do you like the structure and the routine? You know, do you like that kind of sets and reps and all that, the reliability of that, consistency of that, or would or, or would you actually prefer stuff that actually doesn't repeat so much and it's got a little bit there's kind of variety in, and there's a bit of kind of it's a bit adventurous and so we get first of all we want to tap into how do they like to move? What where where's their place that they come from? where they feel comfortable to be challenged mm -hmm. so so again where do they feel comfortable to be challenged right yeah. so we're going to make them uncomfortable we don't want them already being uncomfortable mentally and emotionally before we challenge them they've got to come from a place where they're so that's comfortable okay then all right we we know that they like this kind of movement with you know consistency and structure or variety and please don't ever repeat anything or a bit of both Right, we're depending on what they are. We can we can approach it from there. But then what we need to do is ask some questions around. Okay, then. So tell me, you know, tell me about hobbies. You know, what what types of things you like. do? You play any sports? Um, tell me about what you used to do as physical play as a child, right? Um, because then what we do, and there's a series of questions that go on, where what I'm trying to tap into is say, okay, then we want to connect with them on a physical level, how they like to physically move. Mm. But then we can connect on them at different emotional levels. So an emotional level might be how they want to relate to the thing that they're doing. But then we can connect to historically to where they come from. So, okay then, so they used to do this as a kid. I don't know. They used to, you know, just play catch with their dad or they always used to hit a ball with a tennis racket against the wall or something like that. And they used to do it for hours, you know, because that's, yeah. And then it's like, okay, then we don't have to repeat that. But the fact that there's a memory of that wiring is in there and that link to that feeling is in there. How can we recreate that for them? That will deliver, tick the same boxes that that did, but it might be different. So again, we can actually think it was new, be a bit more intelligent and a little bit, uh, a bit more, I would call it sophisticated about how we would, you know, tailor. It's the same as tailoring exercise to our clients, but this is tailoring play. And play, it's like, let me understand your personality. 
and try and mirror that with what we physically do. Not just, hey, you like sets and reps and you like to, to you know, do things like animal flow, right? Mm. It's, not, it's, it's way beyond that because what we want to do is fire off and tick boxes that are in their mind and in their heart um, and so that we we can match up those two things that's a that's a big thing and it's a really it's a unbelievably satisfying thing to be able to do and uh-huh. and you know the expression of it simple you're playing a game but but what lays behind that man you feel good about yourself because you're like man i'm so sophisticated right now playing this silly game with a balloon right because i know i'm ticking 10 boxes that that no one else can tick, tick or nothing else will tick for that person. So it's, it's an extraordinary ability to be to have that ability to strategize around something that on the face of it doesn't look like it. Yeah. Simple throw away. Oh, they're just playing a game and then they'll do some proper exercise in a minute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's meaning once again behind it and the choices. And and so um from the point of view of um, play-based training, if you've got really diverse range of, you know, in a group, this person who's a sort of more competitive, this person who will be free and playful and stuff, um, how easy is it to navigate that? Um, is it just the terminology you use or what? explain to me how you perhaps manage that situation? So for me, there's a couple of things. So number one, it doesn't happen as often as you think it's going to. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing, if you're playing a a game, let's let's say, I don't know, let's take British Bulldog, for example, because, you know, that's that's a a real classic. So let's look at that. There'll be some people that are in fits of laughter playing that because that's their play personality. They don't even care if they get a cross or not. It's just ridiculous. (laughs) ridiculous that they're basically playing chasey as adults right and there are others that are unbelievable like they want to be the last one they want to be the last runner right? that sorts itself out on its own right because the nature of the game is it doesn't matter like the personality of those people is that will sort itself out just by playing it so that for me is a is a, is a simple one when it comes to uh team stuff perhaps and you've got like a competitive person i in in the videos that i've used in the in the outdoor ones with a group there is one one person there unbelievably competitive and then there's another one who's quite competitive and then everyone else is just there for the for, for you know for the, <laughs> i was gonna say sh- I, giggles there i know right? you are so everyone's there <laughs> for play and giggles and um mm-hmm. So, but they all worked really well together because what happened was as long as you can can reassure them that they are safe to be themselves in that environment and you know that about them, what you can actually do is be quite encouraging and kind of like, go on to the one that's competitive. Yeah. Whereas, and be quite playful in the way that with the others, oh my God. God, like I, I tell you what, if you you should be wearing a clown, both of you should be wearing clown noses right now. Do you know what I mean? Because it, because so so for me, it's knowing that about them yeah. means that you can actually handle the situation. Sometimes you can just go, let's set this game in motion, and I'm just going to step back and allow it to happen, and everyone will get what they need from it. And other times, it's just a matter of of kind of just reinforcing. Okay, then I know that will mean a lot to them because. They want it to be the last one because they're the most competitive for the lot. And, you know, and, and, you know, I made only one mistake during it, which is I put the two most competitive ones together for a particular thing. And it was just like, they're going to be there all day. If I just leave it, (laughs) they're going to be there all day. So it's like, cut. All right, then. Thanks for that. Uh, (laughs) that, That's the thing. So sometimes you put them together. Well, no, that doesn't necessarily work. They don't get their feeling of, doing their best and winning and the other person just doesn't get a oh right that's funny you know they're really into this they they needed that win and it didn't really matter as much it was just the nature of the play not the outcome Mm -hmm. so ironically sometimes you can group them into the wrong groups right that's that's the funny thing 
Um, sometimes a competitive person can mean you get more out of the game because they're strategizing, whereas the others don't even care about strategy. And it's just <laughs> affecting the game. There's one that I do, which is group keepy uppy, right? So they've got to try and keep this ball in the air as a, as a, as a group. But the playful ones, they don't care if it goes off. Well, you can't really get going in the game if you just don't care, right? So if you have a competitive one in, in all right, right, okay, then you, if you do this and you do this, right, what we'll be able to do is we're, and then it gets some flow to it and then everyone gets more out of it, you see, so they can, yeah. you can yeah. use the person in different ways. So for me, it doesn't present a problem. It yeah. presents far fewer problems than in other environments, ironically, because much of it is actually completely smoothed out by the game itself. Brilliant. Amazing. Talk to me about some adults who perhaps have a fear of play, the term play. I know you spoke yeah. about perhaps language and how you might say drills and, you know, you might not say, oh, imagine you do it, you're like a crab shuffling along, you might say you're an athlete. But I think for some, like, if you said to me, Tracy, you've got to sing in public, I'd be like, immediately it would be yeah. like fear, right? If I had to muck around, be playful, I'd be like, I'm all over it. So I recognize there are some adults, the, the term play just brings about a, a, a sort of a, a, a fear response almost. So can you just mm. talk on that, how you might deal with it, cope with it and recognize it? I mean, some people, whilst play is for everyone, yeah, it doesn't mean that everyone's for play. Yeah. So... There'll be certain people that if, if they're if they're really seriously uncomfortable or they get all of those feelings like you you said, like it's for them it's like singing in public or something like that. For them it's, it brings up this fear, this almost um phobic response. Mm. Well, I'm not necessarily gonna push them to play, but what I might do is have some one on one time with them and go, Hey, what, what's fun for you to do? and do it that way so that we can still you know we can still be playful without it needing to be played but they're those people for me aren't ready for group group activity but i think they're ready for one-on-one -on -one in a sit in a in a situation that is completely safe so if i just take a i'm just going to yank a little bit from i do mentoring co mindset coaching as well right so i'm just going to yank a bit across from there so here's the thing, for us to learn and grow, we need, we can't, we cannot learn and grow in a sympathetic dominant state, right? So that's fact. So, you know, when you're cramming for exams and then you got to that point where nothing would go in, it was so sympathetic dominant at that point, the stuff will not, it literally bounces off your forehead, right? That's a sympathetic dominant state, which prevents you from learning and, and growing as, as a human being. So we can only do that in a parasympathetic state mm -hmm. okay i want to learn and grow okay then well we're gonna we've got to deal with this stress okay then so all right then so what do you need in order to be able to learn and grow why well, i need i need safety all oh, right okay then so where do you get safety from mm -hmm. so then you look at the safe so the, your job then is safety okay then manage the environment manage their you know for want of a better word triggers right what what is it and then do the play personality thing. What is it that they're going to... So where, where are they going to be comfortable to then be challenged? So we're back to that place, right? Yeah. It's finding the comfortable, the safe place for them to come from because we want the benefits for them. And geez, if they are almost phobic about playing, they need it more than all of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we we need to find a way of, okay, then we're not going to put them in a group situation that would actually, you know, that's that's throwing someone who can't swim in, into the rapids, isn't it? That's just wrong, right? But can, can we introduce it so they get all the benefits? Because for me, again, another, another category that I deal with is mental health. Mm -hmm. And that would almost be a mental health type client, right? I want to kind of start bringing them in into a really safe environment where we manage as many of the variables as possible mm -hmm. so that we can have so much variety, so many variables take place in a game, which is what happens in a game. It is unpredictable. But 
the beauty of gameplay is, is again the same as sport it's unpredictable within but you can put guidelines around it that mean everyone can play better so for me put them in a one-on-one -on -one situation understand who they are then manage the environment and then manage manage the type of game that you do and manage the way that you handle it as well and i mentioned the word triggers there if all triggers belong to the people that have them um but that doesn't mean that we can't manage situations so that whilst they do the work on managing their own triggers, which is which belong to them, not to us, um, that we can at least manage those situations and those relationships so that when we're not setting them backwards whilst they do all that other kind of work that they're probably already doing to help them manage those as well. Absolutely. Great answer. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to now look at my next question. It's about the six practical sessions in the course, and they're aimed at different populations. Why? Please tell me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've um, I've already kind of alluded to it, haven't I? Like, yeah. So I've got six main kind of video sections. You know, one of them is, is actually warm-up stuff. Um, we'll call it movement preparation, and it's just a – it is in that's more of a that's almost a how would I put that almost a demonstration of how mind and body work together not just you know making sure that the physical body is, is ready but yeah very much a okay then let's let's show you that your body can be more relaxed than mobile by not moving that's number one so everyone check out that one I'm not going to say what it is then I do some myofascial stuff to actually get the the elastic bands working in the in the body really really well and again that's quite playful but ironically i think i went i go quite serious in some of the videos but i'm a victim of my own thing right i'm so keen on making sure that people get what they need from the movement that i forget that it's fun like you'll see it happen to, in some of the videos in the, in the course i'm so intent on making sure that it happens that i forget i'm just messing around Right in, in in you know in my where I'm where I'm coming from should be the mess around have fun joy space, and I go serious because I can, I'm I'm like I need this needs to be professional I need to make sure everyone gets so again everyone if you go go and if you end up doing the course you'll know you'll see me be serious every now and again and be like oh that's when he lost it that's when he lost the point that he was meant to be doing which the whole point of play was it's fun yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so I I do some stuff which is which is mental, emotional, physical connection, but prepares the physical body for play. So we do that. I do um, a chair based play section. So for anyone who's whether they're temporarily in a chair or permanently in a chair, what I want to do is go. Okay, then play should be for everyone. So I've designed a number of games or adapted a number of games in order for them to be truly um, playful. And it could be two people on chairs or one person off the chair and the other person in. And also um, certainly have a, have a empowerment kind of thing about them too. Like we can, we can have this whole equality of opportunity thing that, that we're, that we're so driven by in society and especially today in society you can tell I've got a sociology degree, can't you? <laughs> but this whole kind of equal ops kind of thing, equality of opportunity of, of, for everything, equality of opportunity to play. But also sometimes there's this sense of, okay, then we've adapted it for that population, but have we made it so that we're equal partners in this or maybe mm -hmm. where they could be the powerful one in yes. this game? Yeah. So that for me was a was a was a big thing is to just show it's not actually just like, you know, we're in some way talking down or playing down. Mm -hmm. No, they can be in a position of power as well. So it's 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 a very it's a it's a very flat hierarchy when it comes to play. Like honestly, like the people I I've had turn up to my sessions in in time, you've got a CEO and you, you know, and a bricklayer and a stay at home mum. You know, and and but. Everyone, once they've got their sports gear on, everyone, we're all just playing games, right? That's that's the thing. It's, it's a very flat hierarchy. It's, it's irrelevant. So chair-based, 
yep. specifically to go after what do they need the most. So chair-based activity, for example, postural stability for chair-based people, whether they be athletes or, you know, permanently stuck to a chair, postural stability is one one of the really major factors. Multi-directional movement as well, really one of the important factors. Um, the feeling of normality, mm -hmm. really important factor. There's a, there's a number of different things. So I talk about them, I show the, the games, I then explain the game, make sure everyone there, and then I go through, okay, then what, what do chair-based populations need? And then I go, okay, then this is what they need. What does each game, how do you play each game? What does each game do for them? That's also listed in every everything. Um, then I've got a group um, which is like restricted or older adults, I call it, but it, it's, it's anyone, is it could be actually beginners to exercise. Mm -hmm. So again, we're going, okay, then what do they need? All right, well, they need, they need any kind of movement for a start, but certainly there's a number of boxes that we need to tick for that population. How do we tick them most effectively and safely? Well, here's some games, and then here's an explanation of each of those games, right? Then there's elite elite athletes. Um, I've done I've done people who are training for life. You know, they they just want to be good at, at life. Like elite athletes, obviously, they they got specific needs. The force profiles need to go up. The intensity needs to go up in certain ways but the stress and pressure needs to go down. Mm -hmm. So I've done games where you can be far more athletically challenged um, as well as skill challenged as well, as well as boosting their, boosting their abilities for their sport, depending on what sport and how you might adapt it. And then training for life is like, okay, then what are the, what do they want from their life? Right? Well, what do they, what do they do sport wise? What do they do work wise? What do they do home wise? You know, parents, if we don't put some stuff that doesn't, that, that involves healthily bending and reaching and their parents, well, then we've missed a trick, right? We can do that in play super easily. But in the gym, all right, let's, let's set up some dumbbells and let's see, okay, I want you to step this direction and stop there and then bend and reach with that and pick that one up. And then I want you to put it there and then I want you to step and reach and, it's just like, oh, my God, like, how long would that take you to explain what you can do in a game without so, instruction in three minutes? You know, in, like it's a, that to me, that three minutes will be 40 minutes of explanation. And then, you know, and then um, whatever that word is that I'm trying to say and, okay. uh, and, and act, yeah, not activation, but the actual activity, you know, the yes. the the the. The follow through, the rolling out. What I don't even know what the word is anymore. Um, anyway, the completion of the exercise. The um, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the word that's like the rolling out of the exercise, like that. There's that. There's that. It's that word, right? Now, apparently, play is <laughs> really good for your brain and for memory. Apparently, and for memory. And as you can see, I obviously needed to have a game of something before I came on here. So my vocabulary is, and then. He moves on very quickly. <laughs> uh, training for life and mental health. So training for mental health because, again, mental health, for example, I've put some verbal cues into them, not just physical cues, but verbal cues in there because when I talked about empowerment earlier for chair-based clients, when it comes to mental health, there's some real gold that you can do. And, again, if you kind of pull this in from that whole social psychology, you know, mindset coaching heart mind coaching that 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 i'm really into doing is that yeah you know, okay then so how do we how do we link a number of things so we know that the physical benefits of exercise are as good as drugs for depression and anxiety for example right after four weeks on drugs you get the same response as four weeks on exercise right that's that's that and it takes about that for the neurons to form so it's like okay so there we, there, we, there we have that. But what about if you're doing exercise in a safe environment, so they're comfortable to be challenged, right? safe environment, with people that they feel safe with, that they can then connect with. And then you're giving them verbal cues like name, name if you're comfortable and say in your head or out loud, 
Name me five people you love whilst we're doing this. You can think of them in your head or you can say them out loud. Yeah. And then it might be something like, right, we're going to play this game. Why are you playing that game? You know, and it can just be a back and forth throw, throw catch game or something, something relatively basic so that they, they can then their, their mind and heart can come into it. And I might go something along the lines of, so think back to a time when you felt really strong. Think of a experience where you felt really strong. And how about you tell me about that experience whilst we're doing this game? So we've got this game happening. We've got all the physical benefits of this game happening. It's like, great. Okay, then that's, that's, we're getting that. Then we've got this, we've got this social connection thing going on. But what we're doing is we're taking their mind and emotions into a place of strength. And then you can do it for joy. You can do it for love. You can do it for, you know, when you felt really smart, you know, when you felt really accepted, when you felt really grateful or well, where you felt appreciated. Like you, so we can start, and to be honest with you, I don't even know if this is being done out there in the world because I haven't, I haven't gone into into mental health institutions or anything like that. But for me, knowing what I know from everything on that gamut of of well being through to physical training, mm -hmm. there's a way that we can start combining things unbelievably intelligently, so they can be more power like mm -hmm. i feel like that guy in star wars it could become more powerful than you could possibly imagine right <laughs> it's it's that it, it's yeah. it's so incredible you know we are really we are tapping into the force that that human being force and and creating the kind of change that just playing the game alone yeah couldn't do remembering that playing the game alone does more then you set some reps approach to exercise. Now, that's not. Say we don't. Oh, I feel sorry for a second. But that's me, me saying, hey, we, we need an offering. <laughs> oh, JP, you've frozen for a moment. Oh, no. I think you were saying something really amazing. JP. No, I've lost you completely. <laughs> back hello how much do we need to re-record no no we don't need to re-record that it's fine i can just oh, it came, did it come through oh it, some of it came through it was it was you were talking about the sets and reps and that's where we sort of stopped but that's okay <laughs> but we I... need the message to come through that we sh that doesn't mean that we stop that set some reps there you go exactly that's, that's the important thing so yeah, it does a lot more, and it, but it, but it's like ticking different different boxes. Mm -hmm. But to, but don't stop doing your sets and reps. Like, you know, I'm saying, integrate all of this stuff for a whole human experience. But yeah. if you're talking about mental health, for example, I would be, I'd be starting to sort of do that kind of work, which is, which is much more, for me, it's more nuanced and clever to do than just playing the game or going well, exercise boosts outcomes for anxiety and depression so we will do exercise and what if they don't like it they're just doing it because they know it's like and so there's no real connection to it they're not going to want to repeat it then we get the result of the Yale study that I mentioned earlier that Dr. Joe talked about right. where limit is limiting mm -hmm. the incredible benefits of what exercise can bring so yeah, it's it's a really it's it's a it's a very cool topic, and it's base of base. The bottom line is, it's unbelievably simple to do. Mm -hmm. Once you've done, you know, your homework, as it were, and it ticks more boxes than almost anything else I've ever used when it comes to 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 this whole exercise industry. Yeah, amazing, um, JP. I am always very glad to hear from you and your insights i think anyone listening in 
they're going to know that you have done your homework on this and and you you know speak on it with great authority and i that's why i'm so pleased to have this as i think your fourth course with us because you don't just go through the motions there's all of the stuff behind it that will make people you know understand on a deeper and truer level so a huge thank you to that to you on that um and for giving us another education i'm very excited about it but I wanted to just wrap this up and we didn't come on this webcast to sell the course. We wanted to expose the opportunity, of course, um, mm -hmm. because, you know, I think there's not much out there that, you know, like you said, no one else is really doing this. And you've done this really concise education, which, you know, will give people, you know, the opportunity to integrate this into what they're already doing, but also know on a deep level where it's come from. It's not just mucking about. I mean, mucking about is good, right? But it's all, you know, fact. Um, but I just wanted to just give you the opportunity to wrap this up in, in you know, if someone's not yet convinced of the power of play, <laughs> what would you say to them? I'd say if you're not convinced of the power of play, you're not convinced about human being a human being. Right? That's that, that's the truth of the matter. And I'm sorry if you take that as a as a as an insult. It's not meant as an insult. It's actually it's innately human for us to play. Like you know, there are there are a whole amount of things that wouldn't exist if we weren't playful. Like whenever you're scrolling on your phone, you're playing. Whenever you go to a show, whenever you go for a drink, you know, whenever you meet up with friends, when, whenever you go dancing, you know, all of those things, just having a laugh with your friends, you, you've, you've, everyone's got a sense of humor of some type and they find other people with a similar sense of humor. When you're sharing that banter, you are playing. It's innately human. All we're doing is we're saying let the physicality of playing isn't limited to children who get enormous benefits, especially with learning when it comes to, to play. But, but it's, it's innately required for us to cope with modern life. Now, if you, even if you look at hunter-gatherer societies, there is no way that they weren't, weren't playful at times. When all their needs were met, we will play, right? But what about if play helps you? Like, I can guarantee you, all of them learn how to hunt through playing, right? That's... That's the truth. All of them practiced through playing as well. My daughter at the moment she decided that she likes basketball out of nowhere, right? So she will be out in the yard just bouncing a ball a lot and just working out how to get it from hand to hand and all the rest of it. So she's, she's just, she's playing. Yeah, she wants to get better at sport, but she's playing. She's learning. She's playing. We're innately meant to move and engage in light-hearted ways. Our natural state, as they say, on uh, at birth, our natural state, pretty much is joy like you know that we kind of need to stay connected to joy in order to be human and this is another way that we can do that and my god life's serious like honestly why are we looking to continue being serious like like put your ego to one side and be a human being but be one of the most professional and gifted and nuanced clever human beings in our profession by upskilling in this and understanding this and then delivering this because the ridiculous thing is is that you know client retention it's just like it will go up like it's very difficult to lose clients when they're having an unbelievable amount of fun and connecting with other people in an un unbelievably fun environment and there is something so innately connected with us at a deep level with this stuff that it's really, really difficult not to love. And it's just a matter of finding your expression of it. You know, we've all got ex our expression of the music that we like, you know, the, the way we might like to, to move, the TV shows that we like, the type of entertainment we like, the food that we like, the colours that we like, all of that, you've got all this. Find the one that really speaks to you, and then that's what you're going to be the expert in. But, but get out there and and do it because truly we are one of the few options out there for anyone 
to connect play mind and heart with their physical body and have fun oh my goodness too much stress not enough play yeah absolutely i'm convinced <laughs> i was convinced anyway <laughs> jp <laughs> say that again i didn't hear that you're quite playful anyway so I, you, you, well, you know that it. I don't need any convincing. I'd seen the course, right? So I know. Yeah. Uh, JP, thank you once again for your time and sharing with the Fit Pro community. For people listening in, thank you. It's really appreciated that you would listen to JP and I talking about such a powerful um, area of play-based training. And check out the course because it's rather good if I say so myself. What do you reckon, JP? Should we sign out with a cheesy wave? Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, I'll see you again very soon.